Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. What a crowd today. It's a good day to be inside, though. Uh, I think it was a good call that we had our groundbreaking inside. But I'd like to ask if, if people want to come up. There's still a few seats left. Um, we've certainly got a standing room only crowd. And we'll get done quickly today to, to save your feet, so to say. And it, it is a great afternoon. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Joel Birkin. I'm the department chair and distinguished curators professor of civil architectural and environmental engineering. And this is truly a great day. Um, thank you for joining us. We've been working for this day for many years, better part of a decade. And it's, it's glad that it's finally here, but really we're just starting on our path as well. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge a few people in the audience. In particular, the Academy of Civil Engineering. If any Academy members are present, please stand up and be recognized. And I'd like to point out that, that while today is a great day and we're moving forward, it's built on a legacy of almost 150 years to get to this point, and we're not about to, to turn back and look back on that, but to enjoy that moment and move forward. At this point, I'd like to introduce Chancellor Chris Maples. Interim Chancellor Chris Maples has been with us for a little over a year, and he's been a, an outstanding uh, supporter of our efforts to get this done from day one. Chancellor Maples. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate this uh, milestone, really, uh, for the university. The, the lab we are breaking ground on today, albeit without shovels, <laughs> has been central <laughs> to our strategic vision for the future of infrastructure engineering at Missouri S&T for, as you heard, a decade. Um, in the final phase, it's the final phase of this ambitious initiative to advance S&T's leadership in an area of significant expertise, infrastructure research and development. One of the people who's been at the absolute front line of this initiative since its inception is Kamal Kayat, who is the Vernon and Mary Lee Jones Professor in Civil Engineering and Director of the Center for Infrastructure Engineering Studies. Kamal is out of state on university business and couldn't be present, but he is clearly here in spirit, and I'm sure he will be looking at photos and other things related to this. And he'll be one of the major users of it. Um, the first phase of this initiative for infrastructure engineering was completed with a $2.5 million grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation to purchase testing equipment. The second phase added faculty expertise in civil architectural and environmental engineering and material science and engineering. The third phase is what we've gathered here to celebrate today, 16,000 square feet of new research space that we'll be adding to this high base structures lab. And for those of you who know academia, who know these sort of opportunities, high base space isn't built that many places that often anymore. It tends to be considered to be much too expensive to invest in, and yet it's part of the core of what we do in terms of providing that hands-on education and the importance of actually being able to do things um, when our students graduate. They can do stuff. And it's because of these kinds of structures that will allow them to do it. Um, you know, th there's a philosophy that a lot of places take of a build it and they will come we've reversed that here. We have brought people together and we have been bringing people together to be able to use this facility right from day one and to help design the facility with their needs and their use in place and to help design this facility with educating students to go into all of these areas. As we are moving into the build it phase of this, knowing that this research has been here for a long time. See, this is really cool because, <laughs> because I, I, okay, I'm gonna digress and tell a story where we were one of three or four universities invited to a meeting in Chicago within the past month or so. And groups there were talking about how they recruit at a couple of universities in Indiana that shall go, remain nameless. 
Um, and they came by where our students were doing things and where we were presenting things. And they said, you know what? We're about to move you guys to the top of the list because those other students are really smart, but your students are really smart and they do things. This is the and they do things. This is the part that is so cool that allows them to proceed. So this isn't a leap of faith. This isn't a leap of trying to see if people will come here and do it. This is a leap of planning, a leap of necessity, a leap of education, a leap of research, a leap of integrating all of these things together into what has been part of our DNA for nearly 150 years and what will continue to be part of our DNA into the foreseeable future. And, and it's especially gratifying to see so many Academy members here because without the Academy members, we aren't nearly as good a university. The Academy members have helped transform and make this university what it is. They've helped us attract and retain outstanding faculty. They have helped us attract and graduate outstanding students who become outstanding alumni who look at all of you as Academy members and envision themselves sitting there as Academy members themselves. These are all the great things that we do here. We're here also today because donors chose to invest this six and a half million dollars into the six and a half million dollar lab expansion. And their names are displayed proudly on our banners here. Um, and this will be a permanent part of our lab and we are grateful to every single donor, everyone. Um, and especially to our naming donor for a level of generosity that really paved the way for this project to be finished at the very end. It, it is truly a privilege to be here as we pour the cornerstone on the Clayco Advanced Construction and Materials Laboratory. It is a real honor to do that. Come. This is an investment in the university's future, in your future, in the state's future. This is an investment in what we produce in terms of tremendous students doing great things. And so, Joel, I'm gonna turn this back over to you. And I, although I don't follow scripts, it says here, Chris Maples returns to his seat as Joel returns to the podium. <laughs> With Chris safely returned to his seat, we continue the program. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, before I, I introduce a couple of our civil engineering uh, alumni to, to speak on behalf of representing our entire industry and our donor supporters here, um, I did want to say a few words. Uh, Kamal Kayat really got this ball rolling for the, the lab expansion here. And again, he was unable to be here. He's chairing some sessions uh, and technical committees at the American Concrete Institute meetings that are underway today. Um, so this is from Kamal. First, I would like to extend my sincere regret that I'm not able to be at the uh, event today. Previously committed to chair sessions and committees at the National American Concrete Institute meetings. This laboratory has been a vision that has been in the making since 2011, and my sincere gratitude to all those that helped, particularly all the support from alumni, the partnering donors, and from our partners at Missouri S&T. My gratitude to the staff at the Center for Infrastructure Engineering and Studies, known as CIES, across campus, particularly Jason Cox, uh, for extensive input in the functional design of our new lab. Finally, I would like to thank Ted Ruth and his team at Physical Facilities, particularly Ted Stone, or Fred Stone, uh, who kept this project on track and within budget. Without their support, we would not be taking this groundbreaking event today. The lab will position Missouri S&T as a national leader in the area of restoring and improving our national infrastructure, which is a grand challenge set forth by the National Academy of Engineers. This lab will enable development and testing of novel, sustainable construction materials, ultimately leading to safer infrastructure, faster construction, longer service life, cost-effective materials, and construction system and eco-friendly materials. Today marks the beginning of the next step of an exciting adventure for everyone that will step foot in our new laboratory, and I'm humbled to be part of this and thankful to have played a part in making today a reality. Um, and those were Kamal's words, and, and he was really uh, very disappointed that the, the events and the scheduling did, did not allow him to be here today. Um, and for me, this day has been a long day in coming too. And, and when we say 2011, it actually started much earlier than that 
as we set a vision for our, our department. And long before we knew what this project might be, we said we wanted to position ourselves facilities-wise and capabilities-wise to be a leader in our field across the country and around the globe. We look to change the world. Um, and I, I keep saying we and a lot of the things we talk about here. And that we is a fantastic team that, that spans across this campus and beyond. Um, it goes to, to the support that Moon Choi put in us. One of the first things he said as he took over as president was that he wanted to see this project happen and put forth the challenge for us to get this done in a year, and we did. Uh, it goes to Dean Wellsen, who supported this from his first day on campus. Uh, associate Dean, or excuse me, Associate Dean, and former director of this very laboratory, John Myers, who spent days in the offices of some of the donors we see here, convincing them of the vision that we had, again, long before we had today, of the vision that this university and this uh, department would be leading the way across the country. It goes to our incredible faculty, students, and staff. Everybody who takes part in this department shares our vision to become great and to advance where we are, advance our rankings, and make sure our students, they're our product, our students that go out there, our motto is change the world, and we hold them to it, and we expect them to do it as well. And along the way, I'd, I'd like to thank especially John, Gary, Greg, and Brian, who got the lab cleaned up. This is clean, by the way. Okay. <laughs> this is a very functional lab, and when they came in to start the setup yesterday, there were a few gasps, I will say, um, amongst it, and said, is this going to be ready? Do we need to make alternative plans? And about a half an hour later, we had the banners up, the place cleaned up to this level. This is a functional lab. There are things happening in here today, and it'll be a functional lab again this weekend. Um, so I really wanted to say thanks to everybody who made today possible, and that goes back for uh, uh, many decades as far as our alumni that made this possible. Part of our vision is we look to increase our capabilities in teaching and research, and that's largely tied to our facilities. As, as Chris very well said, we do things. We need facilities to do things. We need equipment. We need the materials and the expertise that you see around you today to do those things. We, live, we are a field in civil architecture and environmental engineering where we engineer the world. We engineer the surroundings of us or around us to make the world a better place. And you see the sign right over there behind Provost Marley. Just wanted to point you out there too, Bob. Um, change the world is our motto. And, and we hold to that. We expect our students to go out and truly change the world. And I'm very confident we will do that because we are doing that. Our alumni have been doing that for nearly 150 years, starting with two of, the first, two of the first three graduates from this institution that started in 1870. So mark on your calendars, two years, 150th celebration. And, and I truly am. I'm wholeheartedly confident that we will change the world because, again, we are. And we see that with the donors that helped make this possible. And we see that with donors that made our facilities that you're sitting in right now possible. Because without those, we wouldn't be where we are today. And that, and that is a top-ranked civil engineering program in the state, top-ranked environmental engineering program in the state, and the top-ranked architectural engineering program in the state. We're positioned to maintain that and advance it far beyond our boundaries. And with these facilities, we will definitely do that, as we have for almost 150 years. It is now my very distinct pleasure to introduce two of our alumni and my friends that have been changing the world for the better through their efforts, through their engineering, through their leadership, and today through their generosity to make this new facility possible. And it's really their, their passion that I think was fueled here just a few years ago, we'll say, um, that set them on a path to be outstanding in their career. All of them have achieved great things in their career, and now they're giving back and expecting to hold as a, an example themselves for our future students and our future alumni to do that exactly as they have is to change the world. The first of our alumni is a civil engineering graduate, Mr. Dick Arnoldy. He is the co-founder and retired chairman from Arco Construction and one outstanding minor alum. I think I met Dick 20 years ago when I was a, a freshman faculty here uh, at this institution, and he's been an outstanding supporter along the way, regardless of what you see on the banner here today, repeatedly giving of his time and his talent as well as his support for a project like this. As I said, Dick is uh, the retired chairman of ARCO Construction. And in ARCO, the AR stands for Arnoldy, and the CO stands for Cook. Jeff Cook, another of our uh, alumni from Missouri S&T, then UMR, um, who serves now as the president and CEO of ARCO. 
In addition, the major gift from this company and founding partner to make this happen, ARCO really championed the project, and then they invited others to jump along and, and to follow along within the, the St. Louis area construction companies in particular. And that advocacy helped provide the momentum and the confidence that other alumni amongst our group had in us that we do it exactly as I pointed out and look to change the world for the better. And we needed that. So for that, I thank you personally, Dick. And if you'd like to share a few words, we'd appreciate that. Thank you, Joel. It's great to see everybody here today. That's a good, very good crowd to be here. And uh, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us at ARCO Construction. This university, especially this department, is very important to us. We have over 30 s and graduates working at ARCO Construction. Eight of the partners, owners of ARCO Construction are s and grads. So this is a very important um, department to us. It's a very important university. We see this as investment, not only in the university, but in ARCO. Hopefully, this lab will enable us to, again, attract the best professors, the best students, keep our high ranking, and therefore, we will be able to have the best students, the, the university will attract the best students down there, down here, who we can then hire at our co-construction. So uh, it's, we're all thrilled. Um, everyone at ARCO, we appreciate all the donors. And uh, I specifically got to call out the people at Clayco Construction. Um, very generous donation they made that kicked the whole project off. So um, I think Clayco deserves a big round of applause. Thank you, guys. And, uh, when I was still working, and uh, 15 years ago, I don't know if I could have given a compliment to Clayco, but once you get retired, you all that's behind you, and you know you can. So anyhow, um, the uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. I can't get used to this. You know, when I came in here as a freshman over 50 years ago, you know, I walk in the west door. I still can't get used to the atrium, and then I come in here, and now we're going to have this other building. And I think, wow, what advancements have we made? Um, you know, in the last 50 years, and it's fantastic. And uh, Again, this is, we acknowledge and appreciate everyone who's made this happen. And uh, I think especially we got a, Joel, you've really spearheaded this, got everybody together in St. Louis, pushed it, and uh, you've done a great job and we appreciate all you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dick, that was very kind. Um, it's my privilege now to introduce um, s and alumna Steve Seekhouse. He's the Chief Operating Officer at Clayco. Um, as the champs have said, we're very grateful to Clayco um, for their immense generosity that, that really kicked this over the finish line and then some. Um, and I'd like to recognize two other s and alums and members of the Seekhouse family who are present today, um, Tom Seekhouse and Bob Seekhouse, who is the father of Tom and Steve. Um, all three of them are in the Civil Engineering Academy which I don't think there's another family with three in there, at least nobody can prove me wrong today as far as I still have the microphone and nobody else does. Um, so one, I'd like to, and I, I know exactly where your two pictures are headed down the hallway and Bob's is around the left a little bit further. And I see that, and I see that, that we are, are many times considered a family. And in this case, we see that that family tradition has stuck through. And I don't think that you would have seen Clayco stand behind this if our excellence didn't extend for generations. I know I'm off script a little bit, it's okay. Um, but it has been an honor to know these three gentlemen for many years. And with that, Steve Seekhouse. Wow, what a crowd. First of all, I want to acknowledge that uh, Dr. Elgin pointed out that there is a, some refreshments in the lobby that we need to get to very quickly, so my speech will be cut very short. <laughs> We all know what that is. Um, I do want to thank Joel and his team of, of professors. They've been extremely easy to work with through the process. Um, as Dick said, this is a great institution, and you know, he hats off to, to Clayco, but also has, hats off to ARCO, who really started the whole process. They were the initial big giver in this to, to really kick this facility off. We just felt really excited about the project, just, just as ARCO was. We've got an extreme, uh, some of our best talent in our company which I can say down here because they're not here, it comes from Missouri S&T UMR. That's, that's the facts. We do too. We have over 35 graduates 
Last summer we had seven uh, internships that were working at Clayco throughout the country. And I would tell you that I would put every one of those graduates and interns up to anybody else in the country as far as civil engineering or construction management degrees. So we have a, we have a great thing going on here. And I think it's important that we keep staying ahead of the game, cutting edge, best facilities, best faculty. And that's what creates the longevity of this institution. So hats off to everybody um, from, that, from that standpoint. We first felt very confident that, that a, a contribution to this uh, academy or to this facility in the ACML building would, would generate for generations more students, better students, better faculty, and create engineering technologies that would hopefully will take us into the next, next generation. So hats off to the, to the academy for being here, and thank you very much for, for asking us to join the, uh, the team here, and we're glad to be part of it. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Steve. Um, and before I introduce our final speaker, I'd also like to recognize another donor. James Heidman was a 1965 graduate in civil engineering and had a fantastic career. Um, Mr. Heidman requested the instrumental funding to, to keep this lab essentially on the, the radar as far as projects that were about halfway down the road. Um, and with that donation, it really fueled us to get behind it and, and led to the, the donations that you see here today. And his legacy gift will certainly be exactly that, a legacy for the future of students from this institution. Speaking of students, um, our last speaker represents a very important part of our team, and that is our students. This year, our department surpassed 600 students overall, and each and every one of those, we expect to go out and do amazing things. But Alexis Lee is not the normal student amongst that. Uh, a senior from West Plains, who's also double majoring and working on her master's degree currently, um, Alexis has been uh, very active in our programs for some time, and she's double civil and architectural engineering. So yes, that's enrolled for three degrees at one time uh, at one institution. Um, she'll receive her master's degree next semester, and she's been a Greenberg Scholar, which was uh, a contribution set up by Aaron Greenberg, which basically meant she started her master's research as a sophomore. Uh, along the, the meantime, she was also a, a STEM ambassador for her hometown of West Plains, and she's past president of Chi Epsilon, our honor society for civil engineers. Along the way, she also picked up the national scholarship for Chi Epsilon. So let's get that. Working on three degrees, president of our honor society, wins a national scholarship amongst all the honor students in the country. We're doing okay. Um, and she's also been very active in the American Concrete Institute, which she does research in this very laboratory. And uh, by the way, in her spare time, she was an s and track athlete as well. Um, so with that, when we asked for a student to present, I went through a few, and as soon as Alexis popped into my head, I was like, ah, uh, we've got our student. So with that, Alexis Lee. Thank you, Dr. Rickon. Um, on behalf of the student body, I would like to formally thank all of you who are here today. Um, your presence, along with your continual support, means a lot to the students, along with the faculty here in the Civil, Architectural, and Environmental Department. I speak from personal experience when I say that the university has become my second home. For many students, it has also become our second family, often traveling far distance to earn an education here at Missouri S&T. For those in the care department, this building, along with these lab facilities, are a very personal home. We have watched each other grow from our beginning years when we took materials classes all the way to now when we're learning about construction and structural engineering. Then many of us, like myself, take it a step further and submerge ourselves in the innovative world of research. Some of us research in materials while all of us focus on structurally intensive works. These research opportunities have broadened our horizons as both students and professionals. I honestly had no intention to pursue a master's degree when I started my academic career almost six years ago. However, due to the research underway in these lab facilities, I could not pass up an opportunity to both increase my knowledge while also making an impact on the world. Missouri S&T is also known in the industry for continually looking for ways to improve our infrastructure. I believe that this new lab is a much needed and much deserved new chapter for our department. And I am sure it will impact students' lives much like the labs in this building have mine. 
Thanks to the efforts of our faculty, alumni, and donors, students like me will be able to advance academically and professionally in ways we can never imagine. By doing so, we would also like to think that we will be building a brighter future for the world. I can't wait to see what this new expansion brings, and I can speak from personal experience that efforts such as this one make a huge difference and change lives in more ways than just one. Thank you, Lexi, for your kind words. And I'd like to invite up now um, many of the donors uh, that will help us pour the cornerstone for our new facility. Everybody ready? Okay, ready? Uh, um, um, which rhymes with pool? One, two, three, four. Just like we planned it. <laughs> um, okay. Well, as, as our cornerstone sets, we'll say, um, I, I think it's time to move out of this lab and into a place to truly celebrate the event. 